Hi everybody, I'm Keith Holland from Keith Holland Guitars and Guitar Hospital and today I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, custom guitars. And um, this is one of those um, uh, parts of uh, guitardom where um, it's essential that you understand what you want and uh, maybe talk to somebody who, who can help you. And uh, that's what we do here at uh, Keith Holland Guitars and Guitar Hospital. So I've been building guitars since the 70s, and uh, that was really uh, a, a period where um, the, the, the idea of modifying and building instruments that were separate from Gibson guitars and Fender guitars, which were the uh, big electric guitars at the time, um, became uh, a subject that people were actually doing. Uh, leading the way in that was Eddie Van Halen when he started modifying his instruments basically Fender instruments and putting humbuckers in them and uh, different vibratos, uh, adding more wines to his pickups and it kind of developed a new industry where uh, new parts were being created and uh, as well as the pickups and so on and so forth and people were modifying their guitars and I was kind of uh, in on that early and uh, I'm uh, uh, happy to be a part of that kind of, kind of brought me uh, to where I am today. So when you, uh, when you order a, a, um, a custom guitar or you have uh, an idea of, of what you want, um, you would come to a person like me and, uh, and discuss it with me. Uh, what we have behind me here is we have um, a wall full of guitars that uh, we've built right here at Keith Hall and Guitars. And uh, we have two lines of instruments, two lines of instruments that we built here. We, we have the Keith Holland Custom Instruments, which uh, uh, we have some examples up here on the wall. Mainly, those are guitars that the samples on the wall are guitars that will have different maybe shaped necks, um, different pickups, configurations, uh, different finishes, so on and so forth. So, gives the people an idea of uh, maybe what uh, is available or what can be done. Uh, it's just a small uh, smattering of what can be done, but it's uh, it's a portion of what can be done. So as, as you look at these guitars, by the way, this this here is a Charvel guitar, and this is a good example. Even though this guitar is made in the early 2000s, it's a very good example of uh, what was created back in the late 70s and early 80s um, as a difference. You notice it looks very much like a Stratocaster guitar. It's got uh, all the all the uh, um, the looks of uh, you know, the aesthetics of a Stratocaster guitar, but difference being, first of all, koa wood on the body, uh, a highly figured neck with a very satiny finish on it, uh, really no finish at all. Um, a humbucking pickup, not the three single coils that you see normally in a Strat. A Floyd Rose locking tremolo, which is and just one volume control, also back routed like a Gibson guitar unlike a Fender, which would have a pickguard. So that's a good example of what was created back in the, uh, mainly the early 80s. Uh, uh, the ideas started uh, changing and, uh, and so on and so forth. So when you see guitars, uh, we have a Los Gatos guitar here, which is uh, what we consider our production instrument because we get the bodies and necks already finished. We put them together with the same high quality components that go into the, the Keith Holland custom guitars. Um, but the difference is uh, a customer can save some money. He can get kind of a custom guitar um, with good quality components. Uh, what we figure are better, uh, you know, based on what uh, we have learned over the years. Better components than what you would get on a regular Custom, uh, production instrument. So that's what the Lost Gas guitars have. The Keith Holland customs, which you see up here, are, if you look at them closely, they're all different than what you would normally find. You see here, as you look at these, some of them are kind of old looking, some are new looking, some are unique designs, maybe in the finishing, um, unique woods here, mahogany wood on it on a, uh, a Telecaster guitar with humbuckers, kind of. There's a humbucker in the bridge position and a P90 in the neck position. These are all very unique. 
This Telecaster over here, if you look at this one here, it has a preamp in it. Runs on a 9 volt battery. Gives it more boost. It's got a unique pickup combination. It looks normal, but they're uh, high output pickups that you can tap down to half power. They also give you a single coil type sound. Also a highly figured neck. And then, if you look at this one, here's an example of something that we do a lot of. And that is building a guitar that is, appears to be old, but it's actually new. And uh, this is a very, very popular thing to do for guitar players who maybe might want a vintage guitar, but they can't afford one, or don't want to go out and take their prize possessions out into the world and play them. And um, I'm a big believer in this kind of idea uh, as a player and as uh, a person who understands tone. If you take this guitar and you put the heavy finish on it and, and do all the things to make it a new guitar, it sounds completely different than this aged guitar. I've actually um, checked the finish uh, by freezing chemically the body and that opens up the finish quite a bit. I've removed quite a bit of the finish as you can see in certain areas. Uh, to make it look right I've actually yellowed part of them. I've, uh, you'll notice here that this is a, a common um, modification that you would see on maybe an 80s or 90s instrument where we put a humbucker in the bridge position. Very very popular uh, type thing. Then we've hot rotted the electronics as well. Um, and, uh, and so it's got all the looks and vibe of a vintage guitar and feel and all of those things. And uh, very, very uh, unique guitar. And that's uh, an example, a very good example of a custom instrument that somebody would order. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, the process of ordering and building a custom instrument. Um, in this case, uh, a solid body electric guitar. So if somebody comes to me and they want, uh, they've decided uh, they've got a pretty good idea of what they want and they want me to build them a guitar, what I do is I sit down with them and uh, we start discussing, uh, uh, we discuss the, the body and the neck first and, uh, and then go from there. But I like to talk to them uh, quite a bit about what exactly they're looking for as far as, you know, um, tone, uh, what some of their players are. If I don't answer, if I don't ask all the right questions, uh, it, things may not turn out as well as uh, they should. So, I like to discuss their favorite players, what they're looking for, for, uh, for as far as maybe those players are concerned, what they want to do with the instrument if they're, you know, playing in a band or uh, playing at home or um, just learning. Sometimes that's an issue. Um, I, I take all those. Um, all those ingredients, I kind of throw them in a pile and look at them and, and, and try to come up with uh, and, and help them with what they want. Many times people will come in and they have a pretty good idea by playing the instruments that I have here in the store already or uh, over a period of time they're familiar with. I get a lot of people who um, I've built several guitars for, so uh, many times I'll have that person come in and go, this is exactly what I want. Other times I'll have people come in with a photograph of a guitar that they especially like and they, they want me to match that. That's a very uh, common uh, uh, thing that uh, happens with uh, ordering instruments. So I sit down with them, we discuss that for a while, we talk about all these issues that I just discussed, and then we, we take a look at this, uh, uh, this custom in instrument estimate and we start filling it out. Um, everything on this is starting with the body, the pickups, the hardware, the electronics, all these uh, issues we talked about um, when we were looking at the wall and uh, looking at the custom instruments um, uh, up close. And, uh, and these are all the issues we go through and I discussed earlier why we select certain um, um, components uh, to go into the guitar and, uh, and so slowly we go through this and we develop many times over over the course, we might get to a part in here where we actually back up and go, you know what, we may want to go this idea, we may want to go that. A lot of ideas are kicked around and um, it may not happen that day that uh, we decide on everything. It may uh, evolve over a period of time. It may put more ideas into the, uh, 
uh, the player's mind of what he may want, and so we may have to go back and do to uh, to look at more uh, options as we go along. Then we look at it. We we pull out our uh, uh, we may. After this is all done, I may pull out some of my catalogs uh, with the customer, or uh, definitely on my own, I pull them out and take a look at them. And, and uh, I've got a, a pretty good uh, idea. Well, I, I, I know almost everything that's in these catalogs already, so I don't really have to uh, um, uh, understand what's there. I, I know what's there. But uh, what I do need to do is, uh, you know, establish prices, look at prices, and, and come up with a, a price that. Uh, that works for both of us. So then, uh, what happens is uh, we start the process of building the instrument. Once uh, once we got the go ahead and uh, uh, everything is established and out on the table, we we start the process of ordering the parts in. And uh, then I'll, I'll uh, when I many sometimes not many times but but sometimes uh, I'll get something in and. Uh, uh, I won't like it, and I'll have to send it back and, and make sure we get the right weight body or the right woods. Uh, if we're, it's going to be a translucent finish I'm putting on there, in other words, we're going to be able to see through the grain and see, see the, uh, uh, I mean, see through the finish and see the grain underneath the wood, then we need to have uh, a nice grain underneath there. And so I always make sure that I get, uh, if we're having a translucent finish, I get the right grain underneath there. Uh, to, to make so the customer is happy when he gets it back. Uh, also, uh, when we get the neck in, um, we'll shape the neck to the customer specs, uh, what exactly what they want, uh, and uh, that's a process I sometimes do with the customer if it's very important to him. I make sure he's there when we do it. Sometimes I'll even strap it. I'll even put strings on it, uh, put tuners on it, and put strings on it, and uh, and uh, put it on a body so that he can actually feel it with the strings on. It. And uh, so we get that neck shape correct. Um, then we'll uh, wheel at that time, you know, once we uh, get the finish um, on both the, the neck and the body and it's cured and polished out and, and all those things are, uh, are perfect. Then we uh, start the process of assembly. And uh, so we take the, the pickups. If there's a pick guard, we will uh, meticulously um, go through and wire up everything in a very uh, secure uh, and attractive manner, actually. And, uh, and then we'll start the assembly of the guitar where we uh, actually, uh, we will level all the frets, uh, reshape, reclown, um, install all the parts on the body and neck, and then uh, we'll do the important thing, which is the most important thing, which is the setup of the instrument with the right strings for the customer. And uh, this process, I would say, from start to finish, usually takes about six to eight weeks. And that's the entire process. And uh, it's uh, uh, something we enjoy doing here. We love it. We love the, 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 uh, the time we spend with our customers. And uh, we're so happy when they get their guitar and, uh, and they love it. And it's their, their baby. That's what we do here. So since you've been building guitars, about how many guitars do you think you've made? Well, um, I'm up to uh, over a thousand. Um, we're uh, closing in on 1,200 actually, so that's uh, that's quite a few. Uh, that's you know since 1996. So um, you know it's taken us a while to get there, but at this point we are making uh, uh, we are building a lot of instruments. We have uh, we have five people on board, um, repairing and building instruments all the time. So uh, it's uh, it's something that we love to do and. Uh, uh, as we build more and more instruments, we become more and more comfortable with them. And uh, uh, you know, it's it's not a matter of how many guitars you build. Honestly, it's it's really um, attention to detail. That's what it comes down to. Does a lot of your business repeat? More than uh, more than I ever thought it would be. Uh, I have some people out there who's got four or five instruments of mine. One thing we offer here is we um, we tell people to bring their guitars back for three years for you know free setups and string changes and it's a it's an attractive thing to have if you're a local guy and uh, and so we have a lo lot of local customers that when they get their first guitar they go wow this is so convenient I can bring my guitar in on Saturday twice a month once or twice a month and uh, and have these guys go through it and when I get it back it's just like it was new you know set up correctly and uh, new strings on it and uh, 
And so that's an attractive thing to have. But we like to have those guitars coming back so we can, you know, see them. Well, we've got some guitars, you know, 15 years old come back, coming back all the time. And, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's really cool. We like that. Well, it's a great story. Thanks a lot. Thank you.